I awoke before you in Kirishima the next morning to the warm sun shining through the wooden doors of the windows. Admittedly, my head was aching and my stomach just as much so from all the mead last night. Guess I went overboard. But I'd say it was well deserved after tearing our way through that cursed forest. I was careful not to wake you both when I got out of the bed and got dressed. Might as well let you idiots get an hour more of much needed rest before we set off again. Plus, you both were sleeping soundly. I didn't want to disturb your rest just yet. I made my way out into the morning markets to sell off the ghoul spider silk I'd collected. The hellish stuff went for a premium as it was highly sought after by armorers and rope makers, but it was notoriously difficult to obtain. Understandably so, as no man wished to step foot in the Hadera forest even with the promise of profit. With the gold from the spider silk, I stocked my bag with enough provisions and supplies to last us until the next town. There was one stop between Kampodo and the coast, an elven outpost named Milisa. It would last us the week's trip there. We'd also pad our meals out by foraging and hunting, even fishing. According to the map deck we'd drawn up for us, there were many small rivers and streams on our way to the coast, so we'd make do. After I gathered everything we'd need, I made my way back to the inn to wake you two up. <laughs> I was even nice enough to stop and grab some sweet buns for you two to eat for breakfast. We didn't have the time to sit down and eat a full meal, so these would suffice for now. Though, my stomach was still uneasy, so I'd leave the food to you two. Oi, wake up you two. We need to get moving. Five more minutes, dumb lizard. I already gave you two an extra hour of sleep. Now, get up. We have to... Meet Dunn's face at the northern gate. Oh, but the bed's so comfy. Who knows when we'll get one again. <laughs> you were the one who wanted to travel with Sparky, so guess what? That means no sleeping in. He's got somewhere important to be. And last time I checked, so do we. Now up, both of you. Got you some food. Oh. You got us breakfast? Aw, oh, Koski, thanks. You can thank me by getting the hell up and getting dressed before I set off and leave you two idiots here. I'll meet you downstairs. Uh, what about breakfast? You'll get it once you're dressed and downstairs. Oh, wait, Bakugo! Uh, uh, hurry, traveler. Let's go. Ugh, for the love of the Celestials. If that idiot bar doesn't show his face in the next minute, we're leaving. <laughs> We've been waiting here for only three minutes, Bakugo. Give him some time. Traveler's right. You need to learn some patience. It's a good quality in the prince, after all. Shut your trap, would you? We have somewhere to be. We need to cover ground before nightfall. We don't have time to waste standing around for an idiot who can't be bothered to be on time. Oh, someone's hungover. Feeling extra grumpy today, are we, Kachan? Kaminari! Hey! Uh. Hey, guys. <laughs> Jeez, you looked pretty bad from far away, but now that I'm up close, you look even shittier. Here, I got just what you need. <sighs> you want to say that again? I haven't twisted a man's arm off in a while. I'm due for some practice. Uh-huh. I've heard that before. Mostly from drunken brutes when they want me to stop singing. Don't worry. I'll find it. Hang on. Almost. Aha! There it is. Here you go, your highness. Hangover potion. Just the cure you need to get you back to your usual lovable self. Ah. Hangover potion. Yeah, it's what I like to call them. They're actually hydration potions, but they work perfectly for curing a nasty hangover. Knock it back, you'll see. 
Wow. You sure have a lot of those in your bag. When you travel the world tavern to tavern each night, you need a heavy supply of them, my scaly friend. Ugh. God damn it all. It tastes like ogre sweat mixed with something Kirishima made once. Hey, I've gotten better. <laughs> Disgusting. Well, you know what they say, Kachan. Medicine that tastes good doesn't work. I'd bet you a gold coin you feel better though, right? <sighs> Take your stupid bottle back and let's go. We're wasting daylight. Well, the bags under your eyes are slightly less noticeable now, so I'll take that as a yes, your highness. <laughs> Shall we then? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Come on, traveler. The weather was mild as we walked along the path, leaving Konporo behind us. The plains were lush with grass and carpeted with wildflowers that swayed gently in the wind that swept through the valley. The sun was bright, but there were plenty of clouds overhead, giving us some shelter from the sun as we walked, the breeze keeping us comfortable as well. Since Konporo was such a popular tourist town, the road to it was smooth and easy to walk, even if we had to move over for passing wagons now and then. It was a far sight better than trying to pick over rough paths with roots and stones. As I eyed the horses that pulled the wagons, it made me wonder if I should have gotten us some of our own. Hell, riding a horse would be much faster than walking. The downside of that was we'd have to care for the beasts. We weren't quite out of the Dragon Hunter territory, so it wasn't safe for Kirishima to fly us yet. But once we got past Millicent, away from human-dominated territory, we'd be able to make some real progress. The elves weren't the type to slay dragons, let alone over petty things like teeth and scales, especially since they had their own alliance with the Emerald Flight, so shitty scales would be safe. <sighs> Unfortunately, my wish for a quiet and comfortable walk to the outpost died with the addition of Dunceface, who was happy to spend the time prattling on and on with you two about whatever popped into that empty head of his. And see that bit of green over there, Traveler? Yep, yeah. and coming up next to us. That's the Glenfarn Forest. Part of the Northern Elven Territories. It's really magical, so we might see some interesting creatures once we get near it. Ah, uh, I've heard of that forest. My mother told me that some of the emeralds moved out here, too. I wonder if we'll see any. Hmm, we might. I've also heard tale of all sorts of beasties being spotted. What kinds? Well, everything from pixies to fawns. The elven forests are kind of like havens, you see. Magical creatures usually retreat into them to avoid things that will hunt them. Like, you know, humans. Mmm, yeah, humans aren't all bad, but a surprising number of them seem to have a pretty alarming disregard for life, especially life that isn't human. You are absolutely correct, my good lizard. It's always been that way. That's why dragons don't usually come around these parts. I gotta say, I was pretty surprised to see one of Kampoto. <laughs> a crimson, too. <laughs> yeah. I go wherever Bakugo goes. I have for years now. I've been away from home for a while now, but... Bakugo's kind of my home at this point. And now, Traveler, too. Oh, so it's like that, huh? Is Kachan your soul flame? Uh, huh? No. No, we're not, um... <laughs> that close. I just... I owe him a life debt, so... I pledged myself to him. He saved me from a poacher camp. And ever since then, I've been protecting him. I don't need any God's damn protection, uh, shitty scales. I'm not some soft-handed, milk-fed noble. You heard all that? Not like you morons were being quiet. Bet they could hear you all the way back in town and no dunce face. Not that it's any of your business, but no. We're not soul flames. Just companions. Now stop yapping and keep walking. Jeez! 
Dragons seriously are masters of mental fortitude to put up with this kind of abuse. I couldn't be around Kachan for that long, so I commend your patience, Kirishima. Even as a child, I had to take him in small doses. Ah, <laughs> uh, what are you giggling about back there, outsider? <laughs> what? Did you get tired of the jester duo back there? You decided to come bother me now, huh? I see that look on your face. You want to know what a soul flame is, I'm guessing. Tch, predictable. Always so curious about every little thing, aren't you? Fine. To keep it simple, if a dragon is a soul flame with another, it means they're mates. Permanent mates. They're bonded not only physically, but down to their very souls. It's this big ritual involving a flight together and exchanging of blood. It's the strongest form of love a dragon can give. And when I say permanent, I meant it. If one of a bonded pair dies, the other will too not long after. Of a broken heart. Romantic, huh? Huh. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. I see it as both tragic and beautiful, I guess. Hold on. Guys, I smell fresh apples. Huh? Just up ahead. Oh, they smell amazing. <sighs> Watch it, shitty scales. Don't just go running off on your own. Sorry! I'm not going far. It's just up here. <laughs> wow. Didn't know dragons were so food driven. It's just him. I think he's broken or some shit. Ow. I'm not being mean, dumbass. Guys! Come see! There's so many! Well, you heard the lizard. Let's go. Come on, Kachan. You too, Traveler. You can take my other hand. Let's catch up before he eats the whole orchard, huh? You idiots. Oi! Don't grab me! I can walk my damn self! Whoa, would you look at that? An apple orchard. I am feeling a little peckish after all that walking. Couldn't hurt to grab a couple. Fine, but we're not staying long, so hurry it up, you three. Ah, Traveler, come here, look. These are called ruby star apples. They're super sweet and delicious. Huh? Nah, I don't think the owners will mind. We'll even leave them a couple of copper as thanks. Oh, will we now? Even out in the middle of nowhere, you find a way to spend my coin. Aw, traveler. That's kind of you. See, Bakugo? They'll leave the money so you can relax. Honestly. You're more of a dragon than you think. Hoarding all that coin to yourself? <laughs> Guess there's a reason you and my mother get along so well. You get nowhere in this world without coin, you dim-witted dragon. Jeez, Kachan. You're so mean to him. Kirishima, you put up with this? I mean, damn. <laughs> ah, he doesn't mean any harm. That's just how Bakugo is. He's just... blunt. Straightforward with how he feels. It's really manly. Huh. Manly. <laughs> right. I, at the very least, hope he's being kind to the lovely traveler. Hey, would you like an apple, darling? I can just fly up and grab you one, traveler. Ah, ah, ah. I got it. Whoa. Whoa. There we go. <laughs> Here you go. Good shot, Kaminari. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. You think that was impressive? Anyone could do that. Don't go thinking you're special just because you can shoot an unmoving target, you talentless bard. Huh. <laughs> just... Hurry the hell up. I want to get moving again before sundown. We have to get to the forest. Yeesh! Bakugo? You okay? 
That's odd. Hmm? What's odd? Hmm. Traveler's right. He doesn't usually get so snappy. I hope he's okay. Maybe he didn't sleep well last night? Or maybe there's a rock in his boot or something. Eh, I don't know. He's always been a bit of a stick in the mud as long as I've known him. But I've been called worse, so his insults haven't improved, that's for sure. <sighs> Let's just catch up with him. He will leave us behind if we don't. Here, Traveler. You can leave the coin here in this little hollow and we can go. I got a couple apples for the road, too. Perfect. Now, let's catch up with our prince, huh? <laughs> wow, he got quite a little lead on us, didn't he? <laughs> I continued on, but slowly, waiting for the lot of you to catch up with me. It wasn't long before I heard the sound of you three coming up behind me, chatting away loud enough I could hear you from a mile away. We only had a couple hours of daylight left, and we needed to at least make it halfway through the forest that lies between us and Milicent. This forest, however, was much less of a threat than Hedera had been. No man-eating spiders the size of war wagons. No cursed undead that wander between the trees. No suffocating darkness. It was a haven as Dunceface had said. Lush and lively. With very few predators within so we would be safe. Especially with Kirishima around. Most beasts catch the scent of a dragon and turn tail. <laughs> one of the benefits of traveling with one on trips through the wilds. Finally. We reached the outskirts of the forest. The trees stretched far upwards into the clear sky above, lush and green and full of colorful plants and flowers. One glance in your direction, <laughs> and I could tell you were amazed at the sight. We made it! Wow, it's as beautiful as I remember it to be. Haven't seen this place in a while. I'm kind of happy that we get to pass through it. Looks as gorgeous and peaceful as always. I hope we get to see some of the magical creatures that inhabit it. You know, last time I walked through here, I think I saw a unicorn. Yeah, right. Unicorns are rare as hell. You only see them if they want you to see them. And trust me, no unicorn would want to see you. Uh, mean? You wound me, Kachan. Huh? Of course unicorns are real outsider. Unicorns, nightmares, kelpies, hell even centaurs, and if we went that way, towards the northwest mountains, you'd see pegasi too. Watch out for those though. They eat meat and they're not picky. Yeah, one of my nursery mates, he got surprised by one when he was flying home. Took a whole chunk out of his tail before he got away. They have this just maw of razor-sharp teeth that can cut through dragon scales. It's so scary. They're nasty bastards. Wait, seriously? I always thought Pegasi were like fluffy, cute-winged horses. <laughs> yeah, go find one and come back and tell me how fluffy and cute they are so I can laugh at you missing a limb. <laughs> okay, Blasty. Why don't we tone down the insults a little? Ugh. <laughs> Aw. My hero, taming the vicious beast of the prince's fury. As we continued our walk through Glenfarn, it was obvious that the difference between this wood and Hedera was as drastic as night and day. The path was well walked, devoid of gnarled roots and vicious thorns. The trees were tall with bright green canopies that swayed in the wind, dappling sunlight over us and the ground as we walked. Birds sang their songs high above us, and now and then, we caught glimpses of movement between the lush and thick brush and flora that surrounds us. But there were no undead creatures here. Instead, we saw small shimmers of light as tiny pixies zipped from flower to flower, or heard the ethereal song of an aurora bird over our heads. I even got to point it out to you. 
the beast of vibrance of purples and blues against the brilliant green of the forest. The scent of wild flowers and greenery lingered in the air, making the trip pleasant. We passed a few patches and, of course, you wanted to stop and gather some when we came to a clearing that was carpeted in moon petals. Beautiful white flowers that are said to grow in places where the moon had shone for a hundred years. It was annoying, but I couldn't tell you no. Ugh, fine. We'll stop for a bit. Just stop being a pest about it. If you want the flowers that bad, fine. Go ahead. Ah, uh, I love these flowers. Ugh, they smell so nice. Kind of makes me sleepy, but like, in a good way. Wait for me, traveler. I'll come too. I heard that the lovely traveler wants some flowers, hmm? <laughs> Come here then. Let me pick some for you. You know, I think this flower would look absolutely beautiful right here. Tucked behind your ear like this. Oi! Knock it off. Huh? Knock what off? You know what you're doing. Don't play dumb with me. Get your hands off them. Whoa, whoa. I was just tucking a flower behind their ear. Yeah. Guys. Well, I don't recall them showing any damn interest in you. Or saying that they want you to. Guys. Shh. Huh? Don't shush me, shitty scales. And don't shush me either. Cotton started it. I mean it. Shh. Everyone. Be really still, and look, right over there at the edge of the clearing, near the back. Huh? Why? <gasps> A unicorn. A unicorn. Standing at the back of the clearing, sure as day, was the rarest beast in all of Solterra. It was a beautiful creature, easily a foot taller than the biggest of draft horses. Its coat shimmered alabaster and gold as it stepped out into the sunlit flower patch. Pale blue eyes fixed not on us three, but solely on you. Its horn was long and twisted, catching the sun with flashes of pinks and blues like mother of pearl. None of us dared to move, or even breathe too loudly as it continued to move further and further into the clearing. Seeing a unicorn on your journey was said to be a blessing by the Celestials, granting you fortune and safety as you went towards your destination, and it honestly gave me a sense of relief. Perhaps this trip wasn't as cursed as I thought. I admit, I was spellbound as I watched it move toward you. Each step it took was amazingly delicate for a beast of its size. As each tufted hoof was put down, it was as if the flowers gently swayed to the side, parting and allowing it to walk without injuring the flora around it. Its tail was long and thin with the fluffy tuff at the end, swaying slowly and brushing against the tops of the moon petals as it walked, closer and closer to you. Soon, it stood right before you, lowering its great head and tilting it slightly to regard you with the gaze that looked almost human. No, more than human. It was as if this creature saw you in a way that others could not. And unknown to us, it spoke. Not through a voice that could be perceived by mortal ears, no. Its voice spoke within your mind. A soft, delicate sound that held the tone of a creature that knew a lifetime and beyond of wonders. Be not afraid, mortal. I sensed your magic and came to investigate. You are familiar to me. Now, we have not met before, little one. But your magic, it is something I know. Something from when this world was young. It still lingers in the throes of slumber, barely awakening. But it is there. 
You face a journey of great peril. Even now, your enemies gather within the shadows, conspiring to steal what brought you here. Be wary. Worry not. I will help you. I come to give you a blessing. One that will help when all hope seems lost. Run your fingers through my mane three times. And do not hesitate if you feel a tangle. You will not harm me. So do not fear. There was little we could do as we stood there watching what was happening. The beast was simply staring at you, and then, you went to touch it. Dunn's face went to open his mouth, but I barely managed to slap my hand over it and silence him before he scared the damn thing off. You reached out with a slightly shaking hand and dragged it through the long, silken strands of its mane three times. All of us holding our breaths when you hit a tangle and seemed to drag through without hesitation. Hiroshima, of course, made a small worried noise, but he for once had the restraint to keep quiet. When you pulled your hand back, strands of the unicorn's mane had caught around your middle finger. We all watched as the strands glowed softly and began to move on their own. They twisted and wove themselves into a band around the base of your finger, and the beast shook its head with a soft whinny, pawing the ground and looking rather pleased with itself. This is my gift to you. A gift to a friend. I pray you never need use it. Farewell, little one. Be well. And do not lose hope, even when things are their bleakest. The unicorn leaned down then pressing its wide, soft nose against your cheek in an almost fond manner before it turned to go, our eyes drawn to the back of the clearing. I almost choked when I realized that it had called for its glory, the whole lot of them staring at us for a long moment as their companion returned to their ranks. I had never seen one unicorn, let alone a whole group of them. I was almost sure I was seeing shit, but there they were in flesh and blood, the creature met your gaze one final time, giving what seemed to be a nod of its head before it trotted off on silent hoofs, and just like that, they were all gone. Nary a leaf or a blade of grass bent to show they had been there. Holy shit. I... You guys saw that, right? It was... It wasn't just... Just one unicorn. It was a whole glory of them. Traveler, that was amazing. It just walked right up to you. I can't believe that just happened. I've never heard of a unicorn approaching anyone, let alone a magicless human. Catch on, let me go. Oh, did you just lick my hand? Ow. You really are such a brute. Huh. <laughs> Here, let me help you up. Grab my hand. Thanks. Ah, uh, what are you going on about, outsider? What do you mean it spoke to you? Uh, traveler. It really spoke to you? That's, <laughs> that's incredible. What did it say? It said that it knew you? Huh. I wonder how. That's not possible. Outsiders not from here. What? You mean like, from the forest? I'm confused. They're here, just like you and me. Uh, it's complicated. We'll tell you later tonight, but just trust us. Our travelers from very, very far away. By the way, what did it put on your hand, traveler? Can I see? 
Oh, this is, this is a unicorn ring. Was that why I let you pet it? It's beautiful. Guys, come look. The magic in it is so soothing. Hmm. Give me your hand, outsider. Let me see. Huh. You've been given a blessing, outsider. Be careful not to waste it, alright? This thing is incredibly rare and just as powerful. Kinda glad you got it on this journey. We need all the help we can get. Wow! I've never seen one of those up close before. I've only ever heard songs about it. And now, I can write my own. I think your blessing deserves to be memorialized forever, Traveler. Oh, I already have a tune in mind. Some amazing magic, Kaminari. I wondered where you kept your instrument. Neat, isn't it? My mentor taught me how to summon any instrument I want. It's a pretty useful spell to know. Especially when you're as revered a bard as I. Ugh. <sighs> Great. Let's just keep going. Won't be long before we reach a good spot to set up camp. Looks like the sun's finally starting to set. <laughs> okay. Can we find a spot where the trees part so we can see the stars? Oh, that'd be a nice idea. I'd love to play a nice ballad for you both when we get there. And the lovely traveler, of course. Oh, oh, I'd love to hear you play. <sighs> Just keep moving, you three. Sleep on down. Make a That sounds really nice, huh, Traveler? It kinda makes me want to dance. Hey, Kaminari. Can you play us something fun? <laughs> of course I can. Fun, I can do. Come on, Traveler. Dance with me. <laughs> really, you two? Idiots. <laughs> You've gotten better at this. Oop! <laughs> Dragons are so light on their feet, huh? You two are natural. <laughs> you sure you don't want to come with me to Falkirk? I'm sure the elves would love to watch your performance. <laughs> I'd love to, but sadly, we're kind of on a time limit. It's really important. <sighs> that was fun. Thanks for dancing with me. I gotta say, I'm curious about you, Traveler. You're so... Mysterious. Some secret mission to return to one of the most dangerous mountain ranges in the realm. On a time constraint. Favored by the unicorn and guided by prince and dragon. You are quite a character. <sighs> huh. You've got time to run your mouth, Dunsface. You've got time to help us set up camp. There's a clearing over there off the main road. It's got that open sky you were wanting, Kirishima. Looks like it's got good protection from the wind, too. So here, you three start setting up. I'm gonna get us some firewood. Hey, take it easy, Kachan. I'm delicate, you know. <laughs> delicate, sure. Try not to get eaten or stolen by Faye while I'm gone. <laughs> we got it, my prince. Don't worry. Well... Let's get this place presentable for when Kachan comes back. Otherwise, he might have me sleeping in a tree, which I have done before, but let's say it's not my most favorite of places to lay my head. Here, hand me your bedroll, Kaminari. 
I'll lay it with ours. Traveler, can you get rid of any stones or branches? I don't know about you, but sleeping with a rock in my side is not how I want to spend my night. <laughs> Thanks. Here you go. There we go. There's yours, Kaminari. Then Baka goes. And mine and the Traveler's. Oh, sharing a bedroll, huh? I'm surprised His Highness lets you get away with that. Given how snappy he's been about them. They're right. It's not like that, it's just... Well, they tend to sleep better and warmer when they share with me. We don't want them to get sick or anything. It's just... A precaution. That's it. Right, Traveler? Okay. Okay. I'll let it go for now, but... Hmm. Me thinks darling Traveler and Dragon doth protest too much. Kaminari. <laughs> alright, alright. I'll stop. Let's focus on something else for right now. Like... food. Ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> Not a moment too soon. What kind of food did you guys bring? I've got some smoked deer meat, some cheese, a couple loaves of honey bread, and some sunberry jam. I've got some wine, too. Oh, that sounds great. We, uh, well, we have to wait for Bakugo to get back, because he's the one who carries our rations. <laughs> I'm not allowed to anymore, for, uh, reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. Well, I'm sure whatever he's got will suffice for tonight. Oh, and we also got these apples from that orchard earlier, too, for dessert. Oh, I hope he hurries up. I'm starving. Huh? Oh, yeah, I have a knife, Traveler. Here. Just be careful, okay? It's pretty sharp. Oh, gonna have a little snack while we wait for Kachan? Good idea. Gotta say, though, never seen anyone peel an apple quite like that. What are you up to, huh? Aw, they're little bunnies made of apples. <laughs> That's so clever, Traveler. Oh, it's for me? I can eat them? Really? Oh, they're so cute, though. You put so much work into making it. I kind of feel bad, but if you're sure. Oh, one for me too? You're too kind, Traveler. Thank you. Hmm. Mm. I don't know what it is, but this tastes better than a regular apple, I think. <laughs> Delicious. Kachan, that you? Yeah. Good to see you three are actually aware of your surroundings. Found some good firewood and some wild vegetables to add to dinner. Uh, Wine all you want, but you're eating your damned vegetables. Yeah, I know. But they're so icky and they get stuck in my teeth. What are you dummies eating anyway? Apple bunnies. Look, our traveler made them. Try one. Here. Don't shove food in my face, idiot. <laughs> You're bold to get that close to his mouth, Kirishima. It's just an apple, but not bad, I guess. Here, Kirishima. Light this while I get our rations out. And no trying to sneak seconds. Fine, fine. As the fire roared to life, I pulled out our rations and we settled in for our dinner. Dunspace shared his food with us, so we didn't have to worry about going to bed on empty stomachs, even though Kirishima was grumbling about having to eat more vegetables than meat to pat things out. The night was comfortable within the forest, the songbirds having roosted for the night, leaving the air open for the chirps of crickets and the peeping of frogs. It was soothing in a way. There was a faint chill in the air, but the fire took care of that easily enough. 
I sat there listening to the three of you talk on and on, contenting myself with watching the fire and keeping an ear out for any danger. Just because we were in an elven forest didn't mean that we were completely safe. But things were calm and I found myself relaxing a bit as the night went on. A few drinks of wine from Kaminari's rations helped, I'll admit, but soon the time grew late. I was getting sleepy, so that left the matter of deciding to watch. <sighs> Since you seem wide awake, you three get to handle the watch for tonight. I'm tired. <laughs> sure thing, Bakugo. You settle in. Traveler, you should get some rest too. You can have second watch, okay? It's the easiest, and you get the most sleep. Can't have you all sleepy for the journey tomorrow. Think you can handle first watch, Kaminari? I'll handle the last one. Not a problem. You three can settle in and rest easy. I got our backs. <laughs> oh, gods. Good thing I'm a light sleeper. <laughs> you underestimate me, good sir. We're perfectly safe. Don't worry. There you go, Traveler. Comfy. <laughs> Good. Oh. Hey, Kaminari. Yes, my scaly friend. Do you think you could sing for us? Something to help us sleep, maybe? Don't. Sing for you? Why, of course I can. Anything in particular you'd like to hear? How about silence? Hmm. Something soothing? <sighs> hmm. I've got just the thing. I'll even give you guys a treat. We bards have magic that allow us to bolster our allies with our songs. And let's just say, you guys are in for the best sleep of your lives. <laughs> Delta. Bakugo. Shh. <laughs> All right. Just close your eyes and listen. You'll be off to sleep in no time. <clears throat> I was against it at first, but even I have to admit that that song was soothing. After a long day of travel and putting up with the bard's nonsense, I was exhausted. We all were. The crackle of the fire's embers, the sound of dunce faces, admittedly decent voice, and the chirp of crickets lulled the three of us closer to sleep by the minute. I could hear Kirishima whine softly behind me, half asleep no doubt. It wasn't long after that I felt him feeling around, before grasping onto the fur of my bedroll and dragging me closer to him and you. <sighs> I was far too tired to protest the way he pulls me into his chest next to you and drapes his wing over the both of us. Sappy bastard. I shared a bed with you idiots one night back in Comporo, and that was all it took for the damn lizard to make a nightly habit of this. We were another day into our journey, one more grain of sand through the hourglass. Thankfully, the road to Falkirk was a half day from where we were, so it wouldn't be long before we would part ways with Dunt's face and get through the forest to Milosin. I knew that the two of you would want to tell him just what was going on. All I could do was pray to any god that would listen that he would keep his mouth shut. 
The last thing we needed was word getting around about you. I so worried sometimes about that bandit attack. About just how much word got out about the gem you carry. It's part of the reason I was so insistent we didn't stay in one place for too long. In case we were being followed. With a heavy sigh, I finally let sleep overtake me. The rumbling of dragon purrs and the soft sounds of music in my ears. 